Now let's talk about something that is more practical for more people. NVIDIA released the GeForce RTX 3050 and 3050 Ti, promising $800 RTX gaming laptops. Now let's be very clear. A 3050 or 3050 Ti is not getting you reasonable real-time RTX ray tracing performance and basically anything even with dlss tricks that's that's not a thing you're not turning rtx on and cranking up the eye candy without compromising more fps than i personally would be comfortable doing especially after we went through the exercise of having people look at the same game side by side with rtx enabled and rtx not enabled and anyone but people who have a pretty good understanding of the graphics rendering pipeline not really being able to tell which one was better than the other uh, I mean, the, the the rasterization tricks that developers have come up with and the, the skillful way they've implemented them has made things like real-time, real-time lighting and reflections look incredibly convincing. So there's going to be this kind of this overlap overlapping kind of learning curve like anytime there's a new tool like a new paradigm for how to do a job there's going to be all these skilled craftspeople that are way better at doing it the old way with the old tools and are able to Mm, outperform the new tools even though the end game of the new tools is going to be way better in the end it's kind of like how um oh man back when the ps2 came out right There were late stage PlayStation 1 games that looked better than some of the early stage PlayStation 2 games. That was totally a thing. And it was just because, don't kid yourself, PlayStation 1 was not nearly as powerful as the PS2. But developers had figured out how to squeeze every last drop of performance out of it. And they were still learning when it came to PS2. Not to mention that launch titles, I mean, you talk about game developer crunch. When you're talking about a game console launch title, there's no such thing as not finishing unless you're Microsoft with the Xbox series. (laughs) Did you just go, what launch titles? What launch titles? Who who needs to launch? Don't worry about it. Play the old ones. Yeah, Game Pass. Go go get Game Pass. (laughs) We've got old launch titles from previous launches. They're launched. You can play the last launch title. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, not that anyone cares. I mean, they're selling like Bilio. Anyway, with launch titles, there's nothing you can do. You, you must have it ready. And sometimes that means cutting corners and compromising. So anyway, you're not going to be enabling real-time ray tracing, but I don't think that's a big deal because realistically what the RTX 3050 series is about is reasonable performance like we never used to have 10 years ago. And I feel like such an old timer talking about this, but that MSI laptop that supposedly had a 7970, which would have been a top tier GPU, that was oh, way yeah. cut down. Yeah. Power hungry, could barely run anything when it first came out, let alone down the line. And now we're getting, let's have a look at these things. So it's a new GA107 GPU, cut from the same cloth, though, as the rest of the Ampere family. Um, they're the first chips at a 50 tier to have ray tracing and, well, the other related features that require RT cores. Um, so thus be eligible for the RTX name. It appears that the 3050 Ti is a full fat or at least close GA107 implementation. So 20 SMs, a total of 2560 CUDA cores. And then below it is the vanilla with 16 SMs and 2048 CUDA cores. Both of them are going to have four gigs of GDDR6 memory, 128 bit bus. These are going to be reasonably high performance cards at very mainstream price points. So all of a sudden, you know, Luke, I think you and I used to basically say, if you're a gamer, don't buy a laptop. Or buy a laptop, but get a cheap laptop and a cheap gaming PC rather than getting an expensive gaming laptop. Yeah. But we're at the point now where realistically anything with a decent amount of storage is probably going to be closer to like $900. But for 900 bucks with an RTX 3050 or 3050 Ti class graphics card, this is something that you will actually be playing esports titles on for years to and, come. And just to jump back to that previous conversation as yeah. well, I mentioned like the games that Intel included on their thing and how it didn't include a ton of the games on the front page of Twitch. This will very easily play a ton of the games on the front page of Twitch. Like, yeah, it's, it's totally fine. You can play your, your Minecraft, your League of Legends, your Fortnite, your Valorant, like 
a lot of this stuff would be no problem whatsoever. And the other thing too is that game developers are really going out of their way. Here, let's go to let's go to games here. Game developers are really going out of their way to make their games accessible. I mean, uh, League of Legends, Minecraft, yeah, pretty much everything here. Is it, wow, Halo Combat. Evolved. Wait, why is this showing up? Fifty-one viewers. Why is this recommend? Ah, oh. uh, because it knows you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're on. You're on recommended for you. You have Where's to go from stupid... high to low views. Where's the stupid filter thing? You can tell I don't actually watch a lot of anything on Twitch. I, I, no I literally care. only I know this because of looking stuff up for Wan Show reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Annoying. How do I change the filter? You know what? I, I'm over it. I don't care anymore. The point is that. Between game developers kind of making sure that their games are going to run on potatoes and between mainstream graphics cards actually having a reasonable amount of performance and <laughs> the fact that you can't buy a graphics card for less than the price of one of these entire laptops right now, these things are going to be absolutely killer. Like if I was if I was NVIDIA, I would be extremely focused on delivering these kinds of products and getting these in the hands of gamers right now. And, and I'm sure that they are. Man, it's it's rough. They could have easily just waited a year and not launched any more GPUs and probably still couldn't have kept up with the supply. So check this out. I'm over on eBay looking at sold listings. Um, here we go. Sold listings for RTX 3060s. Okay, this sold for $860, 990 960 That can't be. That's a TI. That's a TI. Um, so anywhere around 800 to a thousand dollars, these cards are going for. So you could literally buy an entire gaming laptop with a 3050 or 3050 TI in it for less than the price of a 3060 graphics card. Now, I'm really interested to see though, if AMD is able to shake things up, they've actually had some good GPUs lately. And they say that we're going to see laptops based on their competing RX 6000 series by the end of June. We're also going to finally see an AMD competitor to NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling, Fidelity FX Super Resolution. I have my doubts, honestly. AMD has a long and proud history of saying, hey, what about us? We've got feature parity. And then the feature just not even being really close to as good. I mean, yeah. their shadow play look alike. The image quality looks nothing like shadow play it's just not even close to nvidia's nvenc encoder um so maybe they're taking the time maybe they're cooking it up real good making sure it's right but i'm not gonna get my hopes up too high uh something to note by the way speaking of dlss is that nvidia will have dlss support on the 3050 series and that might be something that you're actually going to need to hit 60 FPS, 1080p, and AAA titles. To be clear, these are mainstream GPUs. These are not high-end enthusiast GPUs, but I'm still pretty excited for it because more people having better GPUs and being able to get access to something to play their games is never a bad thing.